What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Manny Reacts. Today, I'll be reacting to Bigger by Beyonce, which is a part of her movie, uh, Black is King. And yeah, I'm just gonna be um, like going through all these songs, honestly. I wish I could react to the whole thing, but YouTube probably wouldn't let me upload it if I did. So, um, I mean like the whole movie at once, but I'll just react to this one though. Just to start. And also, um, I reacted to Brown Skin Girl. So go ahead and I'm not gonna put in the fucking description. That's a lot of work. But if you want to go on my channel and hit the little like search engine and, and find it there, it's there. Wow. Oh, I don't even know if I have the, uh, the, the, the capacity to break this down the way it needs to be broken down. Um, because even those lyrics alone that she started off with were so deep and profound and, and deserve a, a deep critical analysis. If you feel insignificant, you better think again. You better wake up because you're part of something way bigger. You're not just a speck in the universe. Not just some words in the in a Bible verse. Yeah, and she's talking about white people bigger than the, I mean, that at least that's my assumption, uh, bigger than the picture that they framed us to see. So she's basically, um, she's speaking to her baby and she's trying to like pass a message down to, to the next generation. So her baby, I, I think, symbolizes something larger, which is that she's also speaking to like uh black people in general in saying that like you're not insignificant um you're part of uh a plan that's that that is even larger than white supremacy that even overshadows all the bad shit that's going on in the world and although uh white people don't want you to feel that way they want you to feel insignificant uh, just know that you aren't, you know, you aren't who they say you are. Um, yeah, bigger than the picture they framed us to see, because if you let, let white people tell it, man, you'll, you know, people would, if you let white people tell it, you'll, you'll think that you're less than human, um, because that's, that's what they want you to. That's what they want you to believe. Um, I mean, you look at like the menstrual shows and shit, like during the time of Jim Crow, where, uh, you know, they wouldn't depict black folks as like full and complex human beings, but as jokes, as subjects for ridicule, as subjects uh, for mocking, as, uh, you know, incompetent, um, jovial creatures that aren't capable of even conceptualizing pain, sorrow, and despair because they don't have the same capacity that human beings have to feel the full spectrum of emotions. And, um, you know, and, and, and I know that I also have to be mindful because I know even that description uh, can be hurtful to hear especially when it's been drilled into a people for centuries on end. Uh, with that said, that is not who black people are. Um, no, no single group has been able to punch above its weight and 
carry the mantle for what it means to be loving, for what it means to be compassionate, uh, for what it means to be empathetic, uh, for what it means to be resilient in, in the face of uh, indignation, in the face of terrorism like black people in the United States have. Um, you know, no, no people in this country has been able to withstand, um, you know, brutal assaults by the state, um, by the judiciary system, by, um, you know, the, the culture of white supremacy like black people have in this country. And let alone being able to uh, be at the forefront of music, culture, art. I'm sorry, y'all. I know I need to fucking uh, blow my nose. Hold up. Let me blow my nose. Spirituality and, you know, things like that and music like like black people have. So um, what, what she's saying is absolutely true. You know, it's, it's absolutely true. Uh, and, you know, her message coincides heavily, I think, or at least it parallels with um, this notion of black liberation theology, um, which is to say that, uh, you know, in, in the words of James Cone, uh, America, you know, the, the, the person who coined the notion of black liberation theology, the 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 notion that god is not on the side of the oppressor but is on the side of the oppressed in in this particular uh geographic context he's on the side of black people because uh when you see someone who has been lynched when you see someone hanging on the tree that is symbolic of jesus christ hanging on the cross and um you know when you draw those parallels and and you think about uh Jesus Christ, whatever you think about religion, uh, being this poor and disenfranchised uh, peasant who whose people were being, uh, you know, degraded and annihilated and abused and neglected by the Roman Empire, um, and how, you know, he tried to overcome that by preaching a message of. Uh, love and equality and unity amongst his people amongst the the persecuted jewish people during that time um you know and what happened to him you know he he was see he, he was um you know caught by the state tried for sedition and and hung from a cross and you know james cone in liberation theology compares that image to the image of a lot of black folks in the South who uh, were being accosted by white supremacy here in this context, in this country. And so the idea is that, um, you know, your proximity to God is dependent on your proximity to the oppressed, the love, the care, the admiration, uh, the willingness to sacrifice what, you know, what you have to ensure that the most vulnerable populations in, in our society are treated with dignity and respect. So I think, you know, there, there's been no group in the American context who has been able to find uh, victory and defeat like uh, black people have, because it is the case that um, Black folk in this country have never been at a material advantage, right? Um, there has never been, up until this point, any sort of equality as far as access to jobs, as far as access to a living wage, as far as housing um, is concerned, as far as um, like equal laws that apply, uh, that that you know, achieve justice for both white and black people at to the same degree that that has never that has not been a thing in this country so when you look at it in those terms um in the same way that jesus by today's standards would constitute as a loser um 
Cone says that black people also fill this mold. Um, so if you listen to white people, they'll tell you that, yeah, you know, black people lost. They're the losers in society. But James Cone doesn't end the story there. Um, he ends with a message of empowerment like Beyonce does in this video. And I know y'all are probably like, just start the video. Keep going through the fucking video. We're not here to listen to it, but it's important. So y'all, please be, bear with me. Um, but victory and defeat, what does that mean? It means that despite the fact that uh, you belong to a group, you belong to an identity that is being harassed and, and, uh, and, and terrorized and, and, and traumatized, you're, you're able to take away certain types of victory um, that bring you a sense of inner peace and that give you a sense of purpose. And for black people in this country, um, you know, they've been able to do that through music and spirituality. Um, and so when you compare the person who has been lynched to Jesus Christ hanging on the cross, they were both able to achieve victory from defeat, which is to say, you know, Jesus ended up being tracked down, hunted down and killed by the Roman Empire for um, causing a disturbance and, and um, a perceived disturbance and fighting to promote uh, the, the advancement of his people. And then this person hanging on the tree was also tracked down um, and, and hung, but both symbols are so powerful both symbols are so um soul stirring that uh they were able to influence others um to to fight to keep fighting for justice and to keep fighting for equality so that's where the vi victory is it's in the struggle it's in the fight um it's not necessarily in the result you know so please um internalize that message especially as we go into this election you know well the election is in like two or three days um but but victory is not something uh you know the the the, the, def the definition of it all it, it, it cannot be restricted to election results it cannot be restricted to um in just policies yes though those things are you know, there are such things as political victories and political defeats, but that's different than the moral and spiritual and, 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 and social victories that, uh, you know, we, we should be striving for as well, because those also have an impact on laws and, and, and policies and, and politics. So take it for what it's worth. Mm. understand the truth about them questioning your soul um yeah 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 i mean just goes back to what i was talking about before uh what whiteness does what whiteness aims to do is to strip people of their self-confidence to strip people of their self-esteem to convince them that they are uh less beautiful less moral less intelligent than what they actually are um and, and that has a negative effect on people of color's ability to uh, rise up and, and challenge the status quo because the assumption they've internalized, which was projected onto them by whiteness, is that I, I don't have a snowball's chance in hell, you know, and, and maybe these white people are right about me. Um, maybe they are. Maybe they are. Maybe, maybe I don't deserve to be making more money than I already make. Maybe like, maybe, you know, my kids do deserve to go to these shitty schools that are underfunded and under resourced. Cause that's just how it is. You know, that those are the cards we've been dealt. Um, maybe I shouldn't speak up because, you know, it's frowned upon by my white supervisor, my white superior when I do, excuse me. Um, and, and what she's saying is like, you, like they could question your soul or, or the fact that you even have one, but you can't question that because when you do, they win. Mm. 
look up and watch the answers unfold. We we're not gonna find all the answers in in the news, y'all. It's good to stay up to date. It's good to stay um, grounded in what's going on in, in, in politics and in, in international relations. But we're not gonna find all the answers in the fucking empirical research. We're not gonna find all the answers in the in the in the polls and in, in the statistics. We we gotta look up even further than that to to find to to have access to some of the bigger answers. You know what I'm saying? Some of the more meaningful answers. Who are we? Where do we come from? Um, how, how does our past, how does our history, the history of our ancestors inform who we are right now? Who do we want to be? You know what I'm saying? These are the bigger questions that cannot be fucking answered by no goddamn statistics, man. They can't be answered by the research. Because only you know that. Only the relationship you have between you and your higher power, only y'all know that. You know? And I'm not down in research. You know, I was trained as a social scientist. I've published, I've... I am a researcher. I, I am a researcher. But I, I'm also open-minded to know that science can't answer all of our questions. You know? Right, right, right. Mm. And there's a kind of strength in that vulnerability that she's showing, you know, that, that recognition, that acknowledgement that she's not perfect, that none of us are, and that at the end of the day, humans are, uh, are, are, are finite creatures and that all of us fall short, but that when we do, there's still something, there's still someone who uh, loves us and cares about us uh, unconditionally and wants to see us grow and change into a better version of ourselves. And for a lot of people, that is God or that is a, a higher being. Um, that is the divine and uh that's okay that's okay and i know we live in a secular society where um religiosity is equated with ineptitude it's equated with incompetence but um i want you to know that it takes a special kind of comp competence it takes a special kind of open-mindedness to ascertain the notion that um you know there is something bigger than you uh, at play and you can't you can't always explain it you can't articulate it because it's a feeling you know it's a feeling that um no one else knows but you and you just got that feeling you got that intuition and and that's okay and that's okay you know so I find if you're feeling frustrated that's right that's right that's right that was mm. that's all the fruit that was given to me i love that voice inflection and this is beautiful by the way It's on the few that was given to me. Wow, that's beautiful. Legacy, man.
Mm. I love the grit in her voice, you know, when, when she, hold up. I'll show you what I mean. Don't know it yet, no matter how hard it gets, you got my blood in your Dad. I love these drums. And just in case y'all don't know the religious symbolism, um, and it's very subtle, it's very subtle, but um, wow, this is deep, man. There, there are references to a bunch of different religions, uh, but many of which originated in Africa. Um, and I don't want to go too deep into like the historical epistemology of it all but uh like the ancient the indigenous um like spiritual beliefs and like you know oisha and your like all, all all the all the like gods and goddesses and spiritual references are like sprinkled out through this video so um it's pretty obvious that whoever produced it or whoever came up with the ideas um for the production of the video like knew the history of African religions and spirituality, which is just so fucking dope, you know? It, it, it's just really cool. Mm. Wow, that, yeah, yeah, wow, that was good. So, Bigger by Beyonce, if you enjoyed this reaction video, I know it was long, uh, you know, but if you enjoyed it, please comment, like, and subscribe. I will see y'all next time, but until then be safe, be easy.